Welcome everyone. I'm always looking to hear your experiences. So if you have a story you'd like me to read in an upcoming video, please send it to the email in the description. Now, on to the stories. I hope you're ready for this. This happened a couple of months back. My housemates were on a night out, and I decided to stay in and watch a movie with my boyfriend. At midnight, someone knocked on the door. I answered, assuming it was one of my housemates, and it was this young guy who must have been around 18 to 21 years old. I asked him if he was okay, and he told me that he lost one of his airpods behind my house and in my garden. He asked if I would help him look for it. The student house had a backyard with a very high brick wall. There wasn't even a walkway behind the back of the houses, just a little path to a shop's garage a couple of garden gates down. I immediately had an awful feeling about him. He didn't look threatening at all and was about my height, roughly five foot six, but it didn't feel right. He couldn't have been in my garden. And why was he back there anyway? It's not a walkway. There was just no justifiable reason as to how he could have lost his airpod there. I started questioning him, but not too harshly. What do you mean you've lost your earphone? You can't have lost it in my garden. Why were you back there? How did you get access? I don't understand. Whilst this was going on, I felt like he was trying to get into the house because he kept moving forward. My boyfriend eventually came out of the living room and the guy at the door kept asking us to help him look and specifically for me to get my housemates. My boyfriend was about to help him, but I'd half hidden myself behind the door and gave him a death stare. I did not want my boyfriend to help him. My boyfriend ended up saying something along the lines of, Hope you can find your earphone, sorry about this, to the guy. The guy aggressively responds, so you're not going to help me. My boyfriend said, no, shut the door, and that was it. It really spooked me, and it left me with so many questions. I'm not close with my housemates, but I let them all know what happened, and none of them knew the guy. I'm very intuitive, so I still believe something sinister and weird was going on. I was laying in bed and my girlfriend shakes me and says, there's someone at the window. Sure enough, Half a second later, a shape walks past the window. I looked out the window and there's this man, just standing there, staring in our window. Instantly, I'm on high alert. My brother comes out of his room and is like, yeah, I see him too. We keep an eye on him. He walks around our windows, just looking in, scratching his chin, trying to look casual. He noticed us looking at him and wandered away, and then came right back. Let's make this clear, this is an area that no one walks around in, even during the day. This was not a mistake of someone locked out or having a smoke or something. He was there for a reason. I called the police and they sent out an officer. As soon as he pulled up, the creepy guy walked off again, casually. The officer flashed his light around and left, and lo and behold, the creepy guy shows back up, this time chilling in the bushes, wandering around, again, completely casually. So I called the police again, and they came in force, two cruisers and a bunch of officers on foot, flashlights in the works. The guy walked away as they rolled up again, and I haven't seen him since. Currently, there's a cruiser parked outside and one driving around. I haven't seen the creepy guy since and hopefully never will again. I snapped some pictures, but because of the light from the entryway, they aren't great quality. If it was a mistake, why'd he run when the cops showed up? 
and why was he staring at our windows at midnight? Anyway, we aren't sleeping tonight. My mom lives in a trailer park somewhere in BFE. I've never had any problems with the neighbors. I mind my business. They mind their own. My mom's fiancé, on the other hand, being the social butterfly that he is, has to get to know everyone coming and going around the block. So earlier this year, we start seeing a new guy next door, living with what we thought was just a single mom and her child. I thought maybe it's a new boyfriend or something. Of course my mom's fiancé starts getting to know the newbie of the neighborhood, but the months coming, things start to get weird. Whenever my sister would go outside, she'd notice the new neighbor, Chris, would fly out of the back door to do random mundane things. She would notice him watching out the window quite often too, but we didn't pay any mind to her because sometimes my sister can be very dramatic. My mom's fiancé used to let him use our water and water hose to water his gardens. I never understood why, but when we got the water bill back, it was over $200. He told him he can't continue to let him use it because things are so expensive anymore. He immediately got aggressive and tried to tell him we're the only ones who were using too much water, not him. We've never gotten a bill that high before since living there. Last week, I get a random friend request from the neighbor. Not thinking much of it, I approved it. My mom's fiancé lets me know that Chris talked about how pretty I was and asked him for Facebook information, but he acted like he didn't know if I had a Facebook or not. The realization kicks in that he went through hundreds of my mom's fiancé's friends on Facebook to find my profile. By this point, we've already been talking over Facebook, but it has been a friendly chat, so no harm. Plus, I figured he'd seen where I have a boyfriend, because my profile clearly states I'm in a relationship. I mentioned to Chris what my mom's fiancé said, and he said he wasn't going to sugarcoat anything, that he actually called me sexy as fuck. I let it be known I have a boyfriend, and he apologizes. If you think that's the last time he's made a comment or pass, you're wrong. It's like he completely disregards I'm with someone. He even asked me to go into the woods with him, meet him outside at night, and just in general made me so uncomfortable. At this point, I'm over talking to him, but one crucial bit of information my mom's fiancé left out was that he just got out of prison some months ago for some really bad stuff. Breaking and entering. Arson. Name a few. And the worst one was manslaughter for shanking a man while he was serving his time. He claims it was self-defense. I have no idea how he's even walking freely right now, but I digress. So usually once a guy doesn't take the hint of... I have a boyfriend. I'd usually tell them to fuck off, block and be done, but my mother doesn't think that's the best course of action. I even brought up ghosting him, but she thinks that he could just walk right over here if he sees me out and confront me about leaving him on red. He's actually been caught walking through our yard trying to find me one day, so her theory is not far-fetched. My family and my boyfriend are terrified for me. My mom tells me I'm no longer allowed to go outside by myself. I'm just trying to save up enough to move away from here. Last night my family, boyfriend and I, were outside talking on the front porch, just hanging out. We started hearing yelling next door, and the creepy neighbor sped off in a truck. And then a few moments later, he came back and we heard the woman screaming, keep your hands off of me. Police were called and more people showed up at the home. My mom, boyfriend and I left to go to town. It was dark, but when we pulled up to the end of the street to get onto the main road, our headlights lit up a person on the side of the road. It was my creepy neighbor, 
clutching his phone, looking up the road. Today I found out he lied about being single and was cheating on the mother of his children. This poor woman has done everything for him, only for him to try and cheat on her with 16 other women. You can say his dirty ways caught up to him, and now she's kicked him to the curb. He's no longer living next door. As for the commotion we heard, I know she owns all the cars they have, so I'm guessing he tried to take off in one of them. She confronted him about all the dirty messages. She must have made him come back with it since it's here, so he brought it back and tried fighting her. He must have known someone was going to call the cops, so he ran on foot, given his record, and didn't want to go back to jail. Which is why we saw him at the end of the street, looking scared in the dark. I'm not sure if that's exactly what transpired, but based on everything I've heard from last night and from his ex herself today, this is my best guess. To the woman next door, I'm so sorry you and your family had to deal with this. You didn't deserve any of it. As for the creepy neighbor, good riddance, and I hope you get what's coming to you. My family owns a boutique in a very big city here in the south. Our boutique is located in a very wealthy neighborhood, but that doesn't say much. If you go not even a mile north, south, west, or east, you'll enter rough areas of the city. With that being said, we have a lot of homeless, drug addicts, and sketchy people in general come into our stores. When these people come in, we're also nice, respectful, and treat them just like we would our normal customers. However, we don't tolerate begging, stealing, or soliciting, so we've all had our share of weird encounters at our store. However, I think my most recent encounter was the creepiest. Last week, getting ready to close, I was tidying up the store when a woman came in. I greeted her as normal and everything seemed smooth sailing. She was looking around and engaging in conversation about some of our pieces when all of a sudden things changed quickly. The vibe and feeling of the room just felt eerie, so I moved behind the counter just to create a barrier. She began by grabbing one of our candles that has the saying, I love you to the moon and back, across the front of it. I think this is what originally triggered her. She began talking about her family and how she would read the book, I Love You to the Moon and Back, to her triplets, that she didn't know she even had. She then started telling me about her life being married to Ryan Gosling, and how she recently killed him because he kept poisoning her and hiding her three sets of triplets and daughter from her. At this point I was just listening. I didn't want to upset her any more than she already was. When she finished, she began walking the store again, telling me how she just got out of jail for stabbing someone, and at this point, she gets about four feet from my counter, tilts her head, looks me in the eye, and says, I really feel like chopping you up right now. We were the only two in the store at the time, and I was in shock. I had no clue what was about to happen. Up until then, she was just rambling. This was the first instance of her showing aggression. Luckily, seconds after that statement, another customer, one of my regulars, came in, and the woman, who just told me she wanted to chop me up, grabbed her stuff and walked out the door. My regular could feel the tension as I rushed behind her and locked us in the store. The twins and I went to bed a while ago. I'm still recovering from COVID, so I fell asleep very quickly 
and probably not entirely as quick thinking as usual. About half an hour ago, I woke up because someone was knocking on my front door. I came down and, my first mistake, opened the front door. A young man was there, asking about someone called James. I tried to tell him he got the wrong address. He carried on talking and it was clear he wasn't talking about my brother. I told him again he had the wrong address and he became quite aggressive. He said I was lying and then asked me to let him in so he could charge his phone. Then said, then I will show you I'm at the right house. I tried to close the door and he blocked it with his foot. After a brief struggle, I managed to get the door shut. When I closed the door, he carried on knocking for a while and started yelling that he wasn't a scumbag and that I was treating him as such. He wasn't going to hurt me, he just wanted to charge his phone. Eventually he went away, but I'm really shaken up and feeling really vulnerable. I'm lucky because we have great neighbors, and I know if they heard something, they would come running. But they clearly didn't hear this. How can I feel secure when there's only me and the kids in the house? We're taking self-defense classes, but I'm very aware that that night could have ended very differently if he'd gotten into the house. 24 hours after this, my neighbors had just found two guys hiding in their back garden. As soon as they were found, they ran for it. Their son grabbed one of them and now were waiting for the police. Their garden shares a fence with my garden. I don't recognize the lad who's been grabbed, but it is possible that his accomplice is the guy who tried to get in last night. Or it may be completely coincidental. The neighbor's son has a high-end motorcycle that's very desirable and parked in the back garden for that reason. Be vigilant, people. I've had some great suggestions and will definitely be hiking up home security. Unless I know who it is, I will never open that door again. I was about 9 or 10 at the time. It was summer, and I was out riding my skateboard like I always did back then. I stayed on my street since I kept the garage open. So I was riding my skateboard and was just going in the opposite direction of my house. Just then, a car was driving by, and I was watching the driver. Now, I would consider myself quite smart for my age as I knew not to talk to strangers and was always aware of my surroundings. So the car was driving by in the direction of my house. I saw the driver staring at me, and the car slowed down a bit. They drove past my house, but I was still really creeped out. So I grabbed my skateboard and ran inside. One to two hours later, I was headed to the library with my mom. I'd completely forgotten about the man, so I walked outside first. Lo and behold, there he is, parked in front of my house. I ran back inside and waited for my mom. Unsurprisingly, when we came back out, the car was gone. This was almost eight years ago, and to this day, it still creeps me out. I never ended up telling my parents because I didn't want them to worry, but after that, I never saw the car again. When I was about six or seven years old, I had my first international trip to Hong Kong. I was with my mom and her best friend from the university. We arrived around night time, and I was bewildered by the bright lights of the Hong Kong skyline and buzzing energy of the city. On the second day, we traveled to the old part of the city. We had fun enjoying various local eateries and visiting different markets. By the time we finished our lunch and came outside, the streets were jam-packed with people. 
I'm not sure if there was a festival or some kind of events going on, but people were going shoulder to shoulder on the streets. As we traversed down the street, I held onto my mom's hand as hard as I could, until I lost it. I still don't know exactly why I let go of her hand, or if something made me lose the grip, but when I realized I was at the corner of an intersection in the red light, all by myself, in a country that I don't know the language of. In the state of panic, I frantically yelled out for my mom, but all I got in return were weird looks. Then suddenly, my mother grabbed my hand and we started crossing the road. I was so relieved that I started to cry. I asked where she was, but I didn't get a reply. I thought the noise in the street must have muffled my voice, so I asked her again but she didn't even turn around. That was the moment I noticed the hand I was holding had a red manicure with long fingernails. This wasn't the hand of my mother or her friend. Instantly, I tried to free out of her grasp, but she had an iron grip that was now crushing my hand. I wailed and cried, but nobody gave her a second look. In retrospect, I must have looked like a misbehaving kid throwing a tantrum at his mom. This continued for what feels like hours. By this point, I was being dragged by the stranger to a different alleyway. Then, I heard a voice calling my name. I shouted back, and my mom's friend rushed to where I was. At that moment, the stranger dropped my hand and disappeared into the crowd. Only days later, I realized how bad this could have ended, and my mother's friend literally saved my life. Even to this day, I shiver whenever I see women with bright red manicures on their hands. So this probably happened around 10 to 11 years ago, when I was 15 or 16. For a bit of background, the legal drinking age in my country is 18, so if you want alcohol and didn't have a fake ID or a parent to get it for you, then you had to hang around the liquor store until someone came by who agreed to go in and purchase the alcohol for you. So we waited around, found someone who was willing to go in and buy alcohol for us and got him to purchase a few bottles of vodka for me and a few friends, two of which I was with, and the others were meeting after we'd done this. Now, as it was around 6pm, we decided it was too much of a risk to decant our vodka into less suspicious looking bottles in the middle of the street, as it was very busy, so we did what we would usually do in this situation, and found a nearby food place to quickly run it and used the bathroom to decant our alcohol so we could be on our way. This time we chose to do this in a nearby McDonald's we'd done it in before, so we knew it was a safe bet. So we go into McDonald's and head straight for the bathroom, as we'd done a million times before. As we get into the bathroom, me and my other two friends all occupy one cubicle to get the job done and get out and back to our drinking ASAP. And as I previously mentioned, we'd done this lots of times before, and usually opted to come into this McDonald's as it was usually busy, which meant no one paid attention to three strangers running straight into the toilet without purchasing anything. So anyway, we're all in there doing our thing, when I could suddenly hear a lot of shifting and moving around above us. I figured it was possibly the air conditioning, and opted not to tell my friends, as I thought it would freak them out. We get the job done, and as we're about to leave the cubicle, we hear a giggle and... Where are you girls off to? I looked up, and I see the forehead and eyes of a male, who looked to be about 30, just staring out from underneath a tile in the ceiling that he'd slightly lifted. We were all in shock just staring at this guy who proceeded to giggle down at us and ask our names, where we were going, and if he could come. 
We're all in shock because let's be honest, who really expects there to be some random guy in the ceiling of a McDonald's? Being a teenager who thought I was untouchable, I proceeded to tell the guy that he was a perv and to fuck right off. The guy seemed to enjoy this and giggled a little more, still shifting around in the ceiling, never taking his eyes off of us. Now I should probably mention that along with pouring our drink into other bottles, we pre-rolled a few joints, so we were terrified to alert anyone of this, as we were young and terrified of our parents finding out. The guy, still staring at us, proceeds to ask questions like, What age are you guys? Where do you live? Can I have some of your drink and a smoke of your weed? Still all the while, twitching and fidgeting overhead. He then started to lift the tile, and as we're all stuck in the cubicle with this guy above us, we knew the only way for him to get down was to come down directly on top of us. So we noped out at that point pretty quickly. We went outside and discussed what we were going to do, and I decided to go back in and alert someone, as it's a very busy McDonald's, and I knew there would be women and children in and out of the toilet until closing time. I didn't want to risk that creep staying up there just to spy on them, especially since I knew he was there and had witnessed his behavior firsthand. So I go in, tell a member of staff that I'd been in the toilet for a long while, taking a phone call, and that's when the guy had appeared, and to my shock, they were completely unsurprised. They were just pissed off more than anything. I'd seen a few male members of staff enter the toilet, and I figured they could handle it from there, so I went on my way. We still went into that McDonald's, but never had any encounters with Ceiling Guy again. We're not even sure if the guy got caught, as we didn't hear anything about it afterwards. Let me preface this by saying I'm not the most observant human in the world. I'm usually in my own little world and busy planning the rest of my day before I have the chance to enjoy the moment I'm currently in. I'm actively working on this because I'm aware it makes me an easy target. Anywho, I don't live in the best part of town, certainly not the worst, but we have our share of shootings, stabbings, and drug-related issues. That said, I feel pretty safe in my apartment complex, as we are in a little nook off a main road, and all of us neighbors know and watch out for each other. A couple of weeks ago, I came home from work, and as I pulled into a parking space, a woman who I'd never seen approached my car. I'm caught off guard. I don't like people approaching me. Hell, I don't particularly like people and talking to people. She started saying she needed a ride. She needed to go to a storage unit just down the road. I'm kind of doing the thing my poor deaf grandma does, where she smiles and nods, while this girl is talking about needing to take stuff to a storage unit and that she's pregnant. But I have no clue who the hell she is. I just go home and I have to take my dog out and I have things I need to do. That is literally all that's going through my head because I had my afternoon planned out and now this lady's talking to me and I'm getting stressed out because I have a hard time telling people no, all because I'm terrified of disappointing people. Next thing I know, a loud, deep voice snaps me from my mini internal freakout. You're doing alright, Haley. Thank God our property manager had been watching and saw that I was looking uncomfortable. He informed her that she and her friends, who I had not even noticed were hiding between the buildings near the main entrance, needed to leave immediately. So I wonder what would have happened if I had let this girl into my car. Would it have been a totally normal good deed? Or would I have gotten carjacked and ended up getting myself killed? I don't know, but the fact that I didn't pay attention in my own backyard and notice that there was a group of five people that didn't belong, just blending in, gives me the creeps. So, moral of the story, 
I need to pay better attention and get worked up over the right things. This happened when I was 17 years old. I'm from Bosnia and used to go fishing with my friends whenever I could. When the summer break began, we used to explore many rivers. Usually we would encounter animals or people, but nothing special. Keep in mind that the legal driving age in Bosnia is 18, so we would usually take a bus to a location or just walk to it. One night, me and my friends sat on a bus, and we went to a city not too far away. We arrived at the city, and before exiting the bus, an old creepy drunk guy said, Are you boys going fishing? To which I replied, Yes, at the lake. He added, Well, good luck then. I hope you catch some fish. Followed with a really creepy laugh. Anyway, we arrived at the lake, which was very beautiful, and then we started fishing. At around 1.30, after we had some beers, we could hear arguing in the distance. One of my friends took a flashlight and pointed it in the distance, and as he went over a bush, somebody clearly crouched down. As there were many of us, we weren't really scared. Me and the friend with the flashlight went to investigate, while the others stayed near the campfire. Upon arriving in the bush, we spotted the same old drunk guy crawling in the grass. We asked him what he was doing, to which he replied that he was hunting. We didn't see any weapon on him whatsoever. I proceeded to ask him what he was hunting without a weapon. He got up and said, Look, this is a coincidence. I'm gonna get going while stumbling away. We returned and tried to enjoy the rest of the night. At around 4am, we hear somebody angrily shouting in the distance. We turn around and spot this buff guy in a black shirt, covered in tattoos. Behind him was the old guy. What do you think you're doing on my property? He said to us. Sir, we were fishing and didn't know this property was yours. In this argument, I could see my friends packing the fishing rods and all the things we brought. My friends made a run for it in the forest, leaving me and another friend. Okay, you're gonna call your friends and tell them to come back, or else you're not leaving, the buff guy said. I, of course, did not want to do that, as I did nothing bad. We were quiet, just talking and doing nothing to disturb anyone. Plus the river was like 300 meters away from the houses. My friend tells the man we're going and starts to walk. Now, this is where it gets scary. The guy grabs my friend by the neck and starts to argue with him again. I jumped in and hit the guy in the face and started running toward the road. He lets go of my friend and starts to chase after me. After running for about a minute, the guy gets tired. I end up exiting the trees and go onto the street. I wait on a bench for some time and see my friend coming. He sits next to me and tells me that when the guy started chasing me, the old guy jumped on him with a hunting knife. He thankfully missed my friend and he ended up pushing the guy and running as well. We called the cops after that. A patrol came and we gave our statements. We called our other friends and ended up meeting up with them. The cops explained to us that the part where we had been was private property. But again, the fact that the guy grabbed my friend by the neck was not how we should have reacted. We ended up going home and nowadays we laugh at this story. Thrifting is my favorite hobby, if you can call it that. 
it's something I like to do alone when I get the chance, as it's a chance for me to shut my brain off and just let go as I scan aisles crammed with random things for hours. For a side note, I'm a 5 foot 5 former elementary teacher. I'm about as intimidating as a marshmallow, and I'm pretty quiet and stay to myself in public. I had decided to go out of my way to a store I hadn't been to before, and followed my usual routine. When I'm in a store, it's just me and the items. I don't pay any mind to anyone around me, as the stores are crowded and I'm really only there to do my own thing. So, imagine my surprise when an older woman turned to me and said in a huff, Can I help you? I turned and looked around me to make sure I was who she was talking to. I just shook my head, no, making a confused expression and went back to looking at shoes. Things were okay for a minute before I heard her in the next aisle talking to her friend. Oh my god, this creepy woman is following me. Every time I look up, she's there. There was only so much space in the store. I usually go along the edges and then make my way to the center of the store, so there's a good chance she probably just saw me doing my thing. I tried to avoid her until I realized she was talking to random people around me about how creepy I was and how I was stalking her. People started giving me funny looks, but paid no mind once they realized how harmless and shrimpy I look. Uh, her? Really? Someone said. Yeah, and I'm gonna fuck her up if I see her again. She began making more and more aggressive comments, and I decided I'd had enough. I've never fought anyone in my life, and I wasn't planning to that day. I left my items and went to my car. Yeah, something was up with her, and I wasn't sticking around to find out what it was. So for some background, my parents, sister and I, live in an apartment complex for a final week. It's also been in the news recently for numerous health and property violations. And the new owner is being sued by an unlawfully evicted disabled person for stealing his motorized wheelchair. Mice, roaches, ants, and black mold are just some of the issues we've had to deal with on our own because they refuse to. There's gangs, shootings, murders, break-ins, and vehicle damage. We pay $1,850 for a two-bedroom, no washer or dryer. In the lease, it states 24 hours notice before maintenance are allowed to try to enter your house. We've had multiple problems with maintenance, as have others. They often wait until the women, kids, or teens are alone in the house to knock. Today, I was trying to nap due to a severe double ear infection and strong antibiotics. Knocking and the ringing of the doorbell woke me up. This was the conversation. Hi, maintenance. We're cleaning the bathroom fans. Sorry, my parents, the leaseholders, aren't home. I said to the voice coming through the door. Are you 18 or older? You look like it. Yes, I replied. Then we can come in. No, you can't, I said. I close and lock the door, but sit in the living room, just in case, because maintenance has keys. My mom came home minutes after, and I told her the situation. She said she never got an email or letter, and she's not comfortable with them being in the house. So I did the right thing. She goes out to get something out of the truck, and thank God she locked up behind her, because they tried to open the door. My mom comes back, and she says to the person, Of course you can clean the fan vent, when we're all moved out. The voice just replied with, Oh...
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you can't get enough Mr. Revenant content, check out the perks of my Patreon and channel membership. Details are in the description. I'd like to thank my channel members and patrons for the support. Brooke, Snowball Rathena, Janice, Dez, Borderline Betty, Crafty Kel, Tina, Dina, Vampy Debs, Patricia, Amber, Krista, Brenda, Absinthe Alice, Pretty Girl 215, Christy, Kay, Spider's Web, Ooh La La Andrea, Lady Drackard, Sue, Monique, Sean Gorman, Stacy, Greg, Chelsea, Amanda Jane, Samantha, Zepp, Sarah C, Casey, Linda, Austin, Tegan, Chris and Donna, Erin, Lil Smart, Jenny, Gabrielle, Misanthropia, Ryan, Rudy, Christina De La Rosa, Noosh, Fire 05, Jody, Sarah P, James Gargano, Gemma Allen, Monica Level Ace, Alex, and Courtney Maxwell. I will see you on the next one.